All animals depend on plant for food. Few animals are directly dependent on plant for food. Like some herbivorous animals that directly consume the plant. And few animals are indirectly dependent on plants for food. That is, they consume those herbivorous animals that are directly dependent on plants. Now let us see in this food chain what is happening. See, birds have plants to survive. Now these small birds are consumed by snakes and in turn the eagles consume the snake. So here the bird is directly dependent on the plant but these animals are indirectly dependent on plants for food. Now just like in the restaurants, chefs cook the food first and then dinner is served to the people outside. Similarly, for plants, plants need to produce food first to be able to serve to the different animals. Now to cook food, the primary necessity is energy in the form of heat or electricity. Now, what is the source of energy in case of plants? Let's find out by doing a simple experiment. Keep a potted plant for two days in a lighted room and sprinkle some water. The plant grows and survives. But if the same potted plant is kept for two days in a dark room and water is sprinkled, you'll see that the plant slowly wilts off and dies. From here, it is very clear that light energy is required for the manufacture of food and thus the survival of the plant. For the same reason, poles have very scarce, almost negligible vegetation because there is inadequate light for half of the year. And as we saw, light is very important for production of food. This process of production of food or synthesis of food with the help of light energy or photon is known as photosynthesis. Now, is light the only requirement for preparation of food? No. What are the other requirements? Well, to make food, vegetables and spices, etc. are required. Similarly, for plants to manufacture food, along with light, water is required. And that is the reason farmers irrigate their fields. Now, all animals respire, they take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. Now, there are millions of millions of people on the earth respiring at the same time, giving out carbon dioxide. So, the percentage of oxygen should have gone down and the percentage of carbon dioxide should have gone up. But the percentage of all the constituents of air remains constant. And this constancy is maintained with the help of trees. For most parts of the day, trees take up carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. For this reason, all of us, we should plant more trees so that the balance of all the constituents of air is maintained in the atmosphere. Now, why is carbon dioxide taken up by the plants? Well, carbon dioxide is taken up by the plants for photosynthesis, that is food manufacture, and oxygen is given out as a byproduct. So the requirements for photosynthesis is light energy, water, and carbon dioxide. Now you do have a special room in your house known as the kitchen where you prepare the food.
now where is the kitchen of plants let us try and find out by doing a simple experiment see there is a green plant in a lush green meadow now a goat comes and eats up all the green leaves thus the tree or the small plant becomes leafless now slowly this leafless plant wilts off and dies so from here it is clear that the green leaves are the kitchen of the plants and since no food is getting manufactured because of the absence of the leaves energy is not produced and since energy is not produced the green plants wilt off and dies so for photosynthesis these are the various requirements light water carbon dioxide is necessary along with green leaves so photosynthesis is the process by which green plants take up carbon dioxide water and in the presence of light forms food and oxygen now since green plants can manufacture their own food they are known as autotrophs where auto means self and troughs means nourishing so green plants are the producers of food on which the entire mankind and animals survive on 